9 a.m. January 23rd, 2012. We're going to go through the exam review today. So we're going to start with the first question. Now, the first question on the review, unfortunately, I did not get a chance to draw it on, so I wanted you guys to put a line like that on the review. Put that in right now. Okay? Just one line. The domain of this function illustrated is. So, um... We have our function here. We wanted you to put the domain of this function in. Okay? So, let's go on the assumption also. There are arrows at the end of this, so this does not stop. I haven't given you any numbers along this. So, it could be one, two, three. It could go up by millions, trillions. Who knows how large this is going by. What this indicates to you is when you're putting in your domain, what will the domain of this function be, Chris? Yes. The domain of this function, because it exists everywhere along the x-axis and continues forever, we're going to represent it with just x is element of all real numbers. Okay? X, E, R. Okay, question number two. Factoring the following expression. This is a question where uh, you guys will have room to do it. I'm going to add in another page here, and we'll, that way it will be easier to see. Okay. So they want us to factor this. If you guys recall, when factoring, we find the factors of the first terms and the factors of the last terms. We're then going to multiply them together. And those products need to add up, yes, to our B term, our middle term, which is negative 3x. So think of it like this. We've got to get negative 3x. Uh, there's an imaginary 1 here. So what could be factors of 1x squared? Yeah, so 1x and 1x will both multiply to 1x squared. And then we look for the factors of 40. There's going to be quite a few. We have 1 and 40. Uh -huh. 4 and 10 and 5 and 8. Good. And that's 1 and 2. Very good, Troy. Okay. Good. So Troy has already figured out that we're going to be looking to use the last two. When we multiply... 1x times 5x and 1x times 8x, we're going to get 5x and 8x. Now, it's negative 3, so which of these terms has to be negative? 8. eight. eight. We're going to need the 8 to be negative, so that when we add 5x plus negative 8x, we end up with our middle term, which is negative 3x. And just to double check, 5 times negative 8 gives us negative 40, okay? So this is a negative number, so that meant one of them had to be negative. We know that by checking. Because in order to be a factor of it, we had to have a negative number. Now, when we go to put it into our factors, okay, the first column we dealt with, we'll uh, put it as green maybe, those are our first terms. Now, because the first terms are the same, it doesn't actually matter which bracket we put it in. So we can just put x and x in each of these. And again, because the first terms are the same, our second terms, oh, I want to do that blue, okay, Yes, because the first term is the same, it's not going to matter. So we're going to put plus 5 in one of them and subtract 8 in the other. So your final answer, I'm just rewriting the answer in black, is x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 8. Now, if the numbers had been different, okay, so say this was maybe like 2x. You know, I maybe put 2x here, 1x here. Because I multiplied the first term by the 5, it would have had to go in the opposite bracket. Whatever we multiply by across those columns, we put in opposite brackets. When they're the same, it doesn't matter. The reason being is because we have to multiply those when we FOIL to get our answer. And if they're in the same bracket when we're FOILing, we never multiply these numbers by each other. We only multiply them by the numbers in the other bracket. That's why they must go in opposite brackets. Okay. So for this one, it's pretty straightforward. The numbers are the same. That's what we got. So our answer to number two is x plus five, x minus eight. We're gonna get one that's gonna be like that. So we'll get to it, okay? Question number three says, the graph of y equals sine x is reflected on the x-axis, vertically stretched by a factor of negative 0.5 and translated seven units down. What is the equation of the transformed function? Okay, so, Let's go into our sine functions here. Okay, so number three, y is equal to sine x. We only need to get the graph of this function, or sorry, not the graph, we just need the algebraic model of this function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write in 
what our parent function, or we call the skeleton, the theoretical model. These were what we were using. Okay, We had A as a number we'd multiply everything by. We had an, do we call it H? I believe we called it H, yeah. And K on the outside. Okay. Now, what I want you guys to remember is K dealt with what? Up, up and down transformations. Okay. H dealt with left and right. Okay. And remember, it was opposite of what you would think. If it was positive 5, we actually went in a negative direction and vice versa. And A dealt with what? The Stretch. Stretching something or compressing. Stretching. And there's one other thing Compress. it deals with. Compress. Yeah, yeah, compress. Okay, I can call that part of it. Flipping. Yes. Reflections. A, B, J. True. Okay. So A actually had two major things it dealt with. Okay. Now what we'll do is we're going to draw this function. I'm going to draw the original one in black. I want you guys to remember. Zero and zero is one of the points. 90 and one. Zero, 180. 270 and negative one. Let's say 360. Yeah, 360, zero. And then continuously goes like that. So we have a function that looks... Like a wave, here's our trig function for sine. And in the negative direction, it does the, follows that pattern. Okay. So we go down, back up, down. Okay. So here is our y is equal to sine x. So we have that so far. Now, let's talk about the, uh, sorry, transformation they wanted. Very first thing it said was that it was reflected on the x-axis. So if it's reflected, which variable are we talking about? Which one's it affecting? A. a. And what's it doing to A? Negative. Okay. So we already know that whatever number we're going to put in for A, when we go to put these in, A is definitely going to be a negative number. So let's talk about a reflection. Okay. A reflection means drawing a right through here to the uh, equation of the axis, and we flip this function over. So all of our y coordinates are multiplied by negative 1. Okay? And what I mean by that is right now y is 1. Right? When it's 1, when we multiply by negative 1, y then becomes negative 1. Okay? Yeah, well, let's talk about those. What's the y value there? Zero. Zero. What's 0 times negative 1? Zero. Zero stays in that exact same spot. Nothing happens to it. Then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Okay? So that's why all of our y values end up flipping. We're multiplying them by negative. Okay? So this becomes the opposite. Okay, so we have that. The next part says it was vertically stretched Oh, vertically stretched by a, pack, a factor of 0. 0.5. That's a half. So is that really being stretched? No, it's compressed. That's compressed, okay? So we're going to do a, a blue one here as compressed. And what that means is, again, I take all my y values. Right now, that's at, we're on the red one now, okay? Because we flipped this function. So this is technically y equals negative sine x. We've applied a negative to a, okay? Now, it says it's being um, stretch by factor of 0.5. Which variable deals with that? A, H, or K? A. A. So they just told us our A is going to be 0.5. So it's going to actually be negative 0.5, right? Because it's flipped and it's being stretched by a factor of 0.5. So, so what we're going to do now is we take all of our Y values, so 1, and we multiply by 0.5. What is 1 times 0 0.5? 0 0.5. So now... Our y value only goes that high. What about 0 times 0. 0. 0.5? Zero. Still 0. Yeah. Negative 1 times 0. 0.5? Negative 0. 0.5. Negative 0. 0.5. And we continue this pattern. Okay? So now, our blue one is going to be the sine function we're dealing with. And you can see it does not waver as much as it had before. Okay? So this function here, the blue one, is y is equal to negative 0.5 sine x. Okay? So we've only so far dealt with our a. It then says that it is 
translate it down seven units. So we have our blue function, and we're going to translate every point down seven units. So if I'm at positive 0.5, and I, you know what, it'll be easier if we do it this way. If I'm at zero, and I'm going down seven units, where do I go down to? I go down to seven. Oh, seven is up. What's down? down negative. negative seven. I go down to negative seven. Fortunately, that's not quite on this graph. I should have realized that. Let's pretend this goes by twos. Okay? Two, four, six, eight, ten. There we go. Close enough. So the bottom part. I know that's not quite the scale of what we drew before. But essentially, the idea is we now go down seven. So we would take it down here. Now, because each of these increments is now one, our whole function is going to change. Ah, that's not a good example. I shouldn't do that. We need to go down 7, so technically we go off of this. Let's uh, say this is a broken line, okay? Broken line, and this takes us to our negative 7. So this goes down to 7. Every single point is translated down 7 units. So we take all of our major points, and we put them 7 units down compared to where they were before. Yes, that's right. It's going to be negative 6.5. Negative 7, negative 7.5, and so on. And we keep with this pattern all the way through. Okay? So what this function is now is which of the variables does this deal with, H or K? We've dealt with A. K. What is our K going to be if we're going down 7? Negative 7. That, does it say anything about age? No. Black one was the original. Yeah. So this function is now y equals negative 0 0.5 sine x. We don't have to put x in brackets because there is no h value. Minus 7. So our answer in this question. Oops. You're right, we didn't need to determine the formula. We could have done this very simply by just putting y equals negative 0 0.5 sine x minus 7. The next question gives us something with similar stuff to it. But it tells you, for the quadratic function, and then it gives you f at x is equal to negative 9 times x plus 7 squared minus 6. Okay? Many of you guys, get, if you notice here, there is no sine okay, in this function. So we know it's not a sine wave. And here there's no squared. So we know we're not dealing with a quadratic. Okay? Yes, a squared, which is in this one, is a parabola. We're dealing with a quadratic. So we're going to have something that looks like this. The question before dealt with a wave. Those are two different functions. Make sure you recognize the difference in those functions. It then says what is the coordinate of the vertex and what is its max value. Is that like the highest Yeah. Yes. So the Seven. vertex, what form are we in right now? Anyone know? <coughs> We're in vertex form. So this makes it very easy for us. So we are in vertex form right now. I'm going to quickly write it out for you guys again. Remember, f and x is equal to, you want me to write it? Equal to a, All right. the power h, no not the power h, uh, the power 2 minus, a, just h? Plus, plus h, plus, plus h, okay. or minus. minus well, it's minus h, but it's always the opposite when you put it in, all right? Plus k. It's a good thing I wrote this then. Yeah. Okay, so if you take a look, this is our parent function again of a parabola. We have the exact same variables we were using before with a sine wave. They affect the function the exact same way. Okay? So in this function, they've given us our numbers. A is negative 9. Okay? H is... What is H here? Negative 7. Yes, you're right. It's kind of the opposite idea. Technically, our H value is negative 7. 
That's why we go to the left seven units. If you were to just put seven, I understand the confusing there, I would leave it, it'd be okay. Uh, and your k value here is negative six. You do need to get that one right, okay? So since we're in vertex form, my h and my k are actually my vertex. Mm -hmm. So like we were saying, our vertex is actually our h and our k. So what that means is the x value and the y value of my vertex. Now because it's positive 7, that's why we made h negative 7. It is negative 7 for our x value and our k value is negative 6. So when I go to plot the vertex of this function, I go negative 7 and negative 6. Is that right? Am I on there? Bingo. Okay. There is the vertex of our function. We don't know if it's a max or minimum yet. We have to look at our a value. Our a value is negative 9. Since it's negative, it's going downwards, this function. So to draw how thin this is going to be because the a value is 9, remember, we go over 1, and then we square it. Okay. So over 1, 1 squared is 1, and then we multiply that by negative 9. How many do I go down? Nine. I go down nine. So I go the negative direction nine uh, units. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's probably something like that. Oh, so you go over one, down nine? Sir, it's going by twos. Okay. So like we said, we would go down nine because we multiply nine. And on the other direction, same idea. So what this means is we have a very thin parabola if we're asked to graph it. Now the question was actually very straightforward. They asked us for the value of the vertex. Okay. So we'll go back up to it. Our vertex was at negative 7 and negative 6. And they want to know if it was a max or minimum value. Is this the highest or lowest point of this parabola? The highest. Therefore, it is a max. That's right. This is a max yes. value. They asked us what the max value is. To represent the max value, it's actually whatever our y value of the vertex is. So the max value is y is equal to negative 6. That is the highest point. So what they're saying here is we could draw a line right across y at negative 6, and this parabola will never go any higher than that. We know that is the maximum value. Is the maximum value. Okay, the next question gives a function f at n is equal to negative 3, n to the power of 2 plus 4, determine f at negative 6. Okay, so let's write this function down on our page. Our function says f at n is equal to negative 3 times n squared plus 4 determine f at negative 6. So what they mean by this is we would write the function f at negative 6 and what we do is replace our n with the number negative 6. So we have negative 3 multiplied by negative 6 squared plus 4. Ne so we have to square negative 6 first according to our bed mass. Negative 6 times negative 6 is actually positive 36. So we then have negative 3 times 36 plus 4. According to bed mass, again, we multiply 36 times negative 3. That gives us negative 108 plus 4. Negative 108 plus 4, negative 104. So what we would write as an answer in the end here is f at negative 6 is equal to negative 104 as our answer.